Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In today's video, I want to cover some of the skills and attributes that you can use to become a more complete photographer. Well, first and foremost, what does a complete photographer mean really? Uh, by my definition, it's really someone who can go into any landscape, in any light, in any weather, in any place and make photographs that they are finding engaging, exciting, interesting, and then they present them in a way that makes them feel good about that. Now, obviously we've got a lot to cover, so let's just get cracking on with it. As some of you may know, I've just come back from the north coast of Spain where I've been running some workshops with my best buddy, Adam Gibbs. Uh, I can honestly say we had a whale of a time, even though some of the conditions were hugely challenging. So what I want to do in today's video is to go into the Lightroom catalog, have a look at some of the photographs that I made while I was away, some of the locations that we visited, and look at, first of all, what do they have in common? What are all the things that are coming together in these photographs that give them their quality and the way we actually engage with them in the first place? We started off on a very grey day at the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. This is a building that is incredible for its architecture. Um, the curves and lines and colours that are reflected off the surface of metal is really, really appealing. So in this first photograph, we can see that there are certain attributes that are coming together to make what I consider to be an aesthetic and pleasing photograph. Many of you will have heard me talking about the five triggers of engagement, luminosity, contrast, colour, geometry and atmosphere. What is it in this photograph? What are these attributes? So really we have the luminosity of this bright surface and the luminosity in this area of more shadowy uh, surface there. So we have color contrast, we have um, tonal contrast, but we also have geometric contrast. We have curves and lines, all sorts of different shapes and patterns that are coming together within the frame. And every single one of these transitions between dark and light or certain colors and tones or shapes and patterns is a form of contrast that helps us engage and feel as if the whole thing belongs in the frame together. When we organize architecture, we are isolating something from the big picture. And I think this is one of the key skills that we have to identify. The world is a complex place. Buildings are easy to a certain extent because they're already aesthetically pleasing. An architect has designed them. But as a creative artist, we can look at the way that light is interacting with the buildings to actually isolate bits of them to see something that is compact and aesthetically kind of sits in on its own like this. In this particular photograph, again, we have types of contrast, we have types of luminosity, and we have lots of different types of geometry. And this has been somewhat balanced to make it feel as if it's, it's, it's very harmonious in my mind. Once we move out into the landscape, things are not perfect. The landscape is very rarely perfect. It's much more chaotic, much more random. And you can see from the little piece of film here, the way the water was just rushing in over this sandy area was changing it constantly as the water drained away from it. However, we can still see that we do have some of these same triggers working their magic. We have directionality of the lines. We have this geometric movement in the frame. The luminosity is shifting between the warm tones in the top right and the darker bluer tones is another form of contrast. We have some interesting colors. There is an almost an atmospheric feel to the color palette in this as well. Luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere and geometry are the key components of expressive photography. They are the five triggers that I identified in the landscape when I went into the Gobi back in 2017. And if pretty much developed an entirely new style of photography around the concept that we are responding to certain things out there in the landscape or in architecture or in any other type of photography for that matter. We're responding to these same five triggers all the time. They're just in very different proportions. Here's a nice simple example of some wonderful geometry and architecture, natural architecture um, on the north coast of Spain, not too far from Bilbao. And what I was really struck by with this was these rusted lines, the, the contrast of the orange and red um, uh, oxidized metal, basically it's rust. Um, 
juxtaposed against the the cooler surface of the of the rock there and again this is a very geometric image which is using the color contrast and the geometric contrast to create this quite abstract but i think a, a very pretty photograph nonetheless once we moved over to a little bit further west on the coast there's areas of rocks that now this beach has some very very famous sea stacks um, that's one of the most famous locations on the north coast of Spain and somewhere I've been to hundreds of times I think. But most of the participants at some various stage noticed the way the light was shining off of these geometric and flowing rocks. This is one called Fleisch. And the way the water is interacting with them and creating this kind of very energetic but sort of very well contained scene is another example of using the five triggers to create a frame that is contained in itself. I think isolating subjects out of big busy landscapes is probably the biggest skill that you can teach yourself or to learn to know when to stop the frame. When is too much? When have you shown enough of something? How much more of those rocks do we need to see to understand the quality of them? It is always going to be the five triggers that are going to be getting us excited about that scene and our compositional skill, how to be a complete photographer, is to isolate and simplify and reduce because the more stuff we show, the more conflicted the scene is going to become. This is a particularly interesting one, really. Again, this was just a beach where I was off exploring. Um, everyone was off exploring, really. And, you know, I'm no different from anybody else. And it was a curious day because um, I'd gone off into a corner that I hadn't been to before. And it was just this real sense of discovery. And I think another attribute of becoming a more complete photographer is to be inquisitive, to be interested in things, to be fascinated and excited by things that you find. If you're not particularly into landscapes, then being a landscape photographer might not be the best choice for you. However, if you're into butterflies or insects or plants, getting yourself a macro lens and going into your backyard or into a local park might be the thing that gets you excited about the subject. I would say that most landscape photographers have some degree of love for the landscape, but it's that passion and inquisitiveness that's always going to get you the extra yard. Now, I very much like this composition. Uh, I like the way the rocks are reflecting in the water. They are producing quite a strong geometric uh, reflection. This is a cliff that's kind of looming over me from above with some trees that were hanging off the edge. Um, and I just love the way the geometry puts itself together in this frame. It seems very balanced with this angle and this angle and these angles all feeling as if they kind of mesh into each other. Um, I've kept it quite cool to, um, to keep it sort of somewhat melancholic. Reflective would be a good word for something, including a reflection. But you can see here that the luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere and geometry are coming together in a very contained aspect ratio, which is of course the square. Once we get to the end of this video, you'll see that not all the photographs are square. Some are four by five verticals, some are panos even. But at the end of the day, the aspect ratio has a massive impact on how the image is going to feel. Had I made this a vertical, then it would feel very, very different. It would feel more elongated. Talking of panos, here's uh, one that I very much like. I think having the confidence to photograph things that interest you is a hugely important part of our development and a hugely important part of becoming a complete photographer. If you only go out into the landscape to either recreate the compositions that you've seen others make or indeed compose images to comply with a bunch of rules that you may have read or learned somewhere, then I don't think that is going to be the most fruitful way for you to move forward as a creative photographer. This image does not comply to any rules. Uh, it's all kind of centered along this amazing prow of rock that, that's looming out of the frame at me. Um, it's a 16 by 9 photograph that in camera uh, on my Nikon D850. And it is also focus stacked. So I have a focal point here, 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 and here, and here. So the six different images have been combined to produce this sharp front to back, uh, left to right, up and down photograph. 
Now, the really, really important thing with this is to make sure that you're pointing your camera at something that you are passionate about and you find fascinating. The, the luminosity of this rock prow, making, processing it in a way that emphasizes that standout feature. I darkened this left hand side down quite a lot. I've cooled the left hand side down a lot just to make sure that it kind of balanced the right hand side a little bit more. Uh, this is probably my favorite photo from the entire trip actually. I just utterly love it and I can only tell you how good it looks full screen um, and of course the fact it's tack sharp. From a technical point of view these aren't technical photographs to make. We just have to expose and focus and when we reach the limit of the focus of the lens at our chosen aperture then we can now use multiple exposures to get as many focal points as we like and combine those quite simply in Photoshop. The camera is no longer a barrier to our creativity. Optical physics is no longer a barrier to our creativity. We have the skills and the tools available to do that. Now, of course, when you get excellent light, landscape photography would appear to be easier. Uh, in this particular example, we have this beautiful glowing light coming from the left-hand side of the frame and just kissing the edge of a couple of these sea stacks here. We don't always have to show the cause of the light if we are showing the effect of the light. This is something that's a very common trend these days is to show the sun in the frame, to show a starburst or something like that. And it's, um, I don't believe it's entirely necessary to always do that. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've actually photographed any scenes with the sun actually in the frame. I do love to see images where the effect is shown, but the source is a little bit more ambiguous. I processed this one to keep it somewhat dark. Um, it was very, very close to sunset. The sun was just about to pop below the horizon here. Um, but I did process it to emphasize the light kissing the side of the rocks here. Um, and of course, using the other elements of luminosity, contrast, geometry and atmosphere to basically pull something together in the frame. Um, this again is breaking every rule in the book. There's nothing uh, rule of thirds about this. There's nothing classical about this. It's very centered, uh, producing a kind of geometric T-shape running through the frame. Um, one thing I did include in this uh, scene, which I would probably question of myself, is this area of surf here. Uh, luminosity is a very powerful trigger. We want to be focused in on the areas of luminosity that want to tell the story of us being there at sunset. And any little areas of luminosity that can kind of get in the way can be a distraction. Uh, however, I think if you're going to spend a lot of time trying to clone these things out, you have to really question the value of doing that. Sometimes images can be too perfect. Beautiful light is beautiful light. And when again, this is another location where we had beautiful light in the evening. Notice, however, there's a completely blue sky. There was no clouds at all apart from this bank of cloud far out into the ocean there. And having a bright blue sky is not a barrier to making beautiful photographs at sunrise or sunset. The golden light, the effect of a sunset, we're not showing the sun setting, but we're showing the effect of the sun setting. The golden warmth of that is your sunset. The golden warmth, the color of sunset is in the frame. It's just we're not showing it and we're not using clouds to produce atmosphere. In this case, I've used a long exposure and it's the way the surf is interacting with the rocks that's forming the atmosphere. So these are playing the role of clouds. When we talk about the five triggers of luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere and geometry, I do so because they have attributes that engage our attention. This atmospheric water with the long shutter speed will always create a mysterious feel. Bright orange, powerfully somewhat saturated colors in jagged uh, formations are always going to energize and make us go, wow, it's not rocket science. <laughs> it's very, very simple. If we remove the color from this scene, it instantly, we've lost one of the triggers. We've lost color. And when we do that, what happens is that the scene simplifies somewhat. 
definitely feels more threatening, definitely feels more powerful, definitely feels a bit more mysterious even. A slightly different composition as well, isolating the stack with its shadow rather than in space. And again, this is all about isolating something out of a busy landscape to tell a more concise and compact story. For the last couple of images I'm going to show you, we're going to show a moonrise. Uh, this is further west on the coast of northern Spain, and I was utterly fascinated by the way the light was catching these foreground rocks in here. Light interacting with texture is always going to attract the attention. That just tons of detail will always suck you in. The fact it's at the front of the frame makes it feel very close and there's a certain proximity, but I've cropped an awful lot out of this scene in camera, you know, by zooming in, by using a square aspect ratio, by cutting away stuff from the left and the right, I'm doing everything I possibly can to simplify a concise and organized arrangement in quite a busy landscape. There was areas, as you can see in the video, down below where the surf was rushing in with lots of odd angles and lots of other jagged content. What I've tried to do is to simplify and to calm and to subdue in this particular case. The final photograph is taken at the same location and you can see here, this is the foreground rocks in the previous scene and you can just see how much jagged content there actually is in this frame and I'm using the luminosity and the regular, regular geometry of the foreground to simplify and to organize that foreground. It somehow feels quite organized and quite simple in a way. Even though there's lots of geometry, it's somewhat regular. There's lots of chaos, but it's somewhat organized. Uh, I really do like this photograph. In the uh, raw file, the because I was using a long exposure here, um, the moon had moved and was obviously overexposed. So what I've done is I've actually superimposed a photograph of the moon I took separately with a different exposure. Um, and it's a, a little, a tiny bit larger than it was in the original frame, but not by much. Um, and I like the way it just sits there on the horizon and, and kind of lets us know that it was a full moon rising over the, over the landscape there. The concept of becoming a complete photographer is being able to go anywhere in the world and point your camera at interesting things, to go out in any weather and not feel disappointed that you're not getting the conditions that you hoped for. Being a happy photographer is pretty much the most fundamental thing we can try and do. I, I don't think anybody would say, well, I don't mind if I'm miserable as long as I'm making good photographs or I don't mind if I'm depressed or not enjoying the experience as long as I'm making good photographs. I think most of us would turn around and say, well, I'd rather be happy and make good photographs, you know, and that, that's the kind of utopian scenario. If you're interested in learning more about the five triggers of luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere, and geometry, why don't you jump onto the expressive photography education section on our website and buy some of our eBooks, uh, the luminosity and contrast, the color of meaning and the creativity superpowers uh, are three books in a series that are meant to be um, read together and one after another. Uh, that's one thing. Secondly, if you would like to join myself and Adam Gibbs on the north coast of Spain, click on the link below to our uh, workshops page and you will see that there are now two new dates for January 2024 when Adam and I will be again teaming up to take you to uh, many of these incredible locations. On one of the workshops we've just done, we visited 20 separate shooting locations in, in 10 days. Uh, so that was two beaches a day for 10 days. Um, and every section of cliff and coast and beach is different with so many different opportunities. So um, we absolutely are committed to making sure you have a great time if you come and join us. Uh, that's it for today. There's going to be some interesting things coming up. I'm going to have TJ Thorne back on the show uh, for a Vision and Light episode where we're going to talk about making books um, and the power of making books and why we would ever make a book uh, in this economic climate. Um, uh, Adam and I are going to be getting back together to have a chat. Um, plus, I'm going to be bringing you some more content to maybe look at the processing of some of these photographs and how we can use processing to articulate different moods and emotions and to get the most out of the raw files that we have found while we have been out playing in the landscape. 
Um, that's it for today. Please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments about any of the images, let's just have a quick look at uh, the, all of them there. If you have any comments on the images, if you have any favorites, if there's any that you don't like, then happily tell me why and I'm, I'll, it won't change my opinion of them, but be, be, uh, feel free to tell me. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you like the photographs. Um, I have to say I really like all of them, uh, but each single one of them is the product of being interested and engaged on the thing that I was pointing my camera at. And that raw ingredient of fascination, engagement, excitement and interest is going to get you an awful long way on your own road to being a complete photographer. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.